Three years ago, I woke up in an inpatient detox ward. I was scared, I was incredibly hungover, and I felt humiliated. You see, that's where the addicts go. For decades, I have been the life and soul of the party. I was always the last one to leave. I was always the one with the most outrageous tales. I was always the one who couldn't remember getting home. I was always a high functioning drinker. I was a parent of two. I was a professional. I was a homeowner, a psych grad. I had a wide circle of friends. I couldn't be like those other people. You know, the ones that we talk about in hushed tones, the alcoholics. But yet, here I was in hospital and there was no pretending anymore. So I knew when I was in treatment and when I came out that things were going to need to change for me quite significantly, in particular about my social life. Because everything I had done before socially involved booze. Dinner with friends, booze. Going to the movies, booze. Lunch with workmates or breakfast, booze. Christenings, funerals, weddings, mowing the lawn. Yep, all booze. There wasn't a lot that I did without it. And that's because if you look at your own life, you'll see booze is everywhere. And that meant the prospect of socialising without it was really difficult for me. But I knew I couldn't stay home every weekend. I wanted to focus on the things that I was gaining in sobriety, not on what I was losing. I knew there were going to be a lot of challenges in transitioning to a sober life. Learning to say no, setting boundaries, getting rid of bad influences, learning to deal with things that I've been burying for years and years. And also coming to the realisation that I had the emotional maturity of a teenager. It's not easy. But I absolutely refused to accept that my social life was going to be a casualty. Sober was not going to be boring in my world. Thank you very much. I looked around for sober social options. I asked, I googled, and I couldn't find a thing. So, born out of necessity, I created what I needed. A social group for people like me who wanted to catch up, have a laugh on weekends, and do the types of activities that everybody else does. Fun, exciting, adventurous activities, just without alcohol. I called it Untoxicated Booze Free Fun and Friendship. And it started out small, so small, that in fact, sometimes only one or two people would show up. And it got pretty disheartening and at times I did consider giving up. But I persisted. And I persisted because I wanted connection. I didn't want to be lonely. I started hosting weekly events. Dinners and brunches and art galleries and movies and bushwalks. I even hosted a sober singles dating event. And to my surprise and delight, it grew and grew. The only stipulation to attend one of our events was just no drinking at the event. It didn't matter whether you'd been sober for an evening or sober for a lifetime. We didn't ask. And it turns out that there are actually lots of reasons that people want to socialize without alcohol and not all of them are recovery related. It could be for health and fitness reasons, it could be for religious reasons, it could be because there's trauma associated with alcohol or someone was just taking a break or in what was a startling revelation to me, it could just be that that person doesn't like drinking. Soon I was getting requests for new groups. So I opened one in Sydney, I opened one in Melbourne, and I also opened uh, an online peer support group for people that did want to explore their relationship with alcohol a little bit more deeply. Today, 
We have almost 8,000 members in Untoxicated. There's a team of about 15 of us, all volunteers who run it, and most of us who are in recovery. We are a real community. We have each other's backs. And it makes me, and my heart, really happy to say that we are making a difference in people's lives. I get messages all the time from members to say that they're 10 days or six months or one year sober and that they couldn't have done it without our community. I get messages from people who are saying they're sober for the first time in their adult life because they are part of what we do. We also have psychologists and rehabs and hospitals and alcohol counsellors referring to us. So in the two years that I started Untoxicated, we have gone from those early events with a couple of people, one of whom was me, to become a thriving, engaged community of thousands of Australians spanning multiple cities and online. And I've come to understand that there are lots of reasons why Untoxicated seems to deeply resonate with people. We are normalising socialising sober. And this is not the norm for people who live in countries that have significant drinking cultures. We're also enabling people to experience environments in a positive way where they would previously have used alcohol, such as restaurants. And this enables them to relearn behaviours and associations and start rewiring those neural pathways. We use a positive social model. We don't preach, we don't demonise alcohol, we just show that there are fun and appealing alternatives for people who want to get together without alcohol, for those who want it, and for whatever reason. We're changing sobriety's image problem. I think it's fairly safe to say that Sobriety is generally seen as boring, square and antisocial. And to that we say, you haven't been to an intoxicated event. We're changing the narrative. We're not trying to downplay the seriousness of addiction. But what we do do is we put the fun and playfulness into sober. And more than that, we wear our sobriety, many of us, as a badge of honour. Not something to be ashamed of. We're reducing stigma. People who are problem drinkers are just like everybody else. Many of them are high functioning like I was. They're parenting, they're holding down jobs, they're paying the mortgage, they're probably thinking they will have it all under control. To ask those people to walk through the doors of a recovery program is a pretty giant leap. But for them to come to a social, welcoming, non-judgmental fun event without alcohol is doable. Reducing stigma means that people seek support earlier and connection prevents people from returning to old habits. We see it time and time and again in Intoxicated. When people stop drinking, they lose their old friendship groups and that leaves them isolated and it leaves them sad. We are ultimately social animals. We need other people. We need to belong and we need to connect. Isolation leads to relapse. It really is that simple. And I believe this social aspect is something that is a really big gap in existing recovery models. The good news is that this isolation aspect is something that we can all do something about. It's really easy. Ditch the subtle and the not so subtle peer pressure, please. Because one thing that I hear from my members time and time again from virtually everybody is that the fear of rejection and ridicule from friends, family, even complete strangers for choosing not to drink is huge. Go on, just have one. Don't be so boring. Are you pregnant or something? The pressure is honestly relentless. And I know that this is something that I absolutely used to be guilty of myself. I don't think I appreciated the impact that this might have on people. 
but your response matters. You don't know what that person is going through in their life. And if they are experiencing a, a challenging relationship with alcohol at that time, it would have taken them an enormous amount of courage just to show up, let alone to say no to a drink. So next time someone tells you they're not drinking, just don't make a big deal out of it because it shouldn't be a big deal. And if you wanted to go the extra mile, if a friend tells you they're taking a break or having a night off, you could always offer to forego your wine over dinner with them. Or if you wanted to take it that step further, you could offer to host a booze-free brunch or lunch. That would be an amazing gift, I promise you, that support. Give it a try. Like me and the many others like me that are choosing a sober or a sober curious lifestyle, you might find you like it.